Okay, so I'm back after the uh, driver crash there, so I do apologise for that. Okay, um, so let's just quickly open the camera track again. Okay, yeah, so what we want to do now is actually just add some things to the third person character. Um, so this is going to help us, well, so it's going to sort of essentially set the camera and, and make a few additional accommodations. The first thing we need to do, well, what I'm going to do anyway, is go ahead and set up a function in here called use main camera track. Like so. And from here, what I'm going to do is use the get all actors of class node. Now, in terms of this particular node, it's not one I'm too fond of using. Uh, I normally try and look for alternate ways to to do it, uh, particularly with managers that the camera tracks would register with. Uh, but in terms of this initial setup, as it's going to be called on begin play, um, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. Uh, but depending on the sort of thing that you're doing, you may want to create like an actual manager that, that manages the camera tracks that they register with that the player can uh, get the references from. Okay, so with that, uh, we get all actors of class. The actor class type, that's the B, BP camera track. So that's the uh, this one here. And we want to check to see if that's not empty. Because if it is empty, then there isn't any in the levels, uh, so it shouldn't do anything. Uh, so pull from the uh, is not empty and want to add a branch. If it's not empty, what we want to do uh, is actually loop through this. So I'm just going to do pull from the out actors and do a for each loop uh, with break and connect it like so. And what we actually want to do is, is check to see if there is the main camera track. Now, if we've got multiple in the level, that's going to be pretty difficult to find, especially if we've not specified it. So if we come back to the camera track uh, blueprint and just add a new variable, I'm just going to call this one is main track, like so. And I'm just going to set that as instance editable. So by default, it's going to be false. Um, but what we'd have to do is when there is one in the level, particularly the first one, you just want to tick that to, to true. So I'll set that to set this one to true uh, for that particular one. And what we're doing, if we go back to the third person character, back into the use main camera track, we want to see if that variable is true. So it is main track. So if we pull from the array element, we get that particular function uh, variable. And then from there, we want to do a branch. So now the cam, uh, the play character itself, particularly if we're going to be switching cameras, uh, does need to keep track of which one it's currently using. So I'm just going to pull from the array element. I'm just going to promote that to a variable. I'm going to just call this one uh, camera track. Camera, call it active camera track. Uh, it's up to you what you want to name these things. Uh, and I want to connect that to the true. So if it is the main track, we want to set the camera track that the player character is referencing uh, to. Let's so. Once we've done that, we can actually pull from the camera track, so the one that we've that's the main track, and we want to set the cam owner. So if you pull from it, you should be able to find that function, and that's the function we created in here. So that's this one here. So for the character, we just want to do self. So that's going to pass a reference of itself to the, the camera track. The next thing we want to do is set the view target to the camera track. So if we pull from the camera track itself, or, or get a reference for it, that's so. And then we want to go ahead and get the player controller. If you're wanting to possibly use this in multiplayer, um, this itself should still be perfectly fine with it being in the third person character. Um, but you may want to look at 
getting the controller of the, the pawn as opposed to using this it's just something to be aware of single player shouldn't be much of an issue but if you pull from this you should then be able to get the node set to view target with blend and that should look like this i'm going to connect that up and then for the new view target we want to input the camera track so the way this particular node works is it will set the view of the controller to the first camera it finds within the actor that's, that's, that's inputted. Um, it can get quite troublesome if the input actor has multiple cameras because generally it will just use the first one. So in this instance, because there's only one camera in this track, it's always going to be pointing to that one. The next thing I want to do, the blend time, I'm just going to leave that at zero seconds. So it should be sort of instant. Um, the reason why is because this is going to be called on begin play so it's going to set the camera as soon as we start the other settings really aren't that important in this particular instance just because as i said it's going to be on ticks so there's not going to be really any blending or anything like that um, from here then uh, from the set view type with blend we want to bring the connection back to the break on the for each loop so the moment that this loop finds what we're looking for it's going to stop it's not going to bother looking through all the others so it'll set the camera to the first camera track it finds where the is main track is is true That's so now i think that sh itself should actually start working uh, camera track uh, nope, it's not going to work because I've not connected it up. So the on the begin play, just after where it sets the uh, mapping context for the inputs, you just want to connect that use camera track. That's so. And now, as you can see, it's already started working. Um, if you are testing it yourselves as, as we go along, you will, however, notice that the movement keys are they don't match what you would expect for the camera so at the moment i'm pressing down but it's moving away from the camera uh, camera if i press up it's kind of moving uh yeah it's, it's just not what we want so we do need to add something to the third person character that sort of takes this into account so what we want to do um on the the actual movement input. So I'm just going to move the jump stuff down a little bit. And move this along. Just to give myself a bit more space. So the way that the movement works at the moment is it's getting the control rotation of the player controller. However, we're not wanting to use the control rotation. Uh, instead, what we want to use is the camera rotation that we're currently viewing. So what we can do is if we use the get uh, camera manager, so it's get player camera manager. If we drag from this, we can then get the camera rotation. So the thing about the camera manager is it's, it's what the player controller uses to discern what camera it should be viewing the world from and then relaying that back to the the player screen so this is quite useful because that way we don't have to constantly sort of get the camera track and get the camera from there we can just use it from the camera manager because whenever we switch cameras it's automatically going to be updated in here anyway and reflects using the get camera rotation so from here it's just a case of connecting it up similar to what they do here with the get control rotation so we connect the roll up and the yaw and we can delete the old one. That's so. Uh, we'll just drop that in, and then we just copy and paste those two again. I want to do the same on the uh, forward and back. So this time it's just the yaw, and we'll get rid of that one as well. Just like so. Now that itself should sort out the movement so now it's going to be based on where you're looking so if you're pressing up then it'll sort of move away from the camera and if you press down it'll move towards it left is left and right is right so it's uh it'll feel much better so uh yeah 
So we're we're, get, we're getting somewhere. We're getting somewhere. Uh, one last thing I want to do, just in regards to the camera movements itself, is if I was to say just delete the camera track from the level and then press play. Uh, okay, so yeah, so it looks like that's the camera itself still works, which is which is great. It's kind of what we want. But we do want to put a bit of a fail safe in there anyway for that. So what we can do on the camera track is if we get the camera track and convert to a validated get on the triggered, we only want this look stuff to happen if if there isn't one. So that way if we have a camera track set up and we're viewing from it, it's not going to be using uh, it's not going to still be updating the, the controller inputs. Okay. So, so yeah, so it should still be working exactly the same with the camera. So I'm just using the mouse to, to move around. Uh, left is still left, right is still right. And that type of thing. Okay. So one last thing I do want to do in here is just add a quick branch to this. And I'm just going to promote the condition to a variable, and I'm going to call this one use main cam track. Uh, so this just gives you a a way of disabling the cameras altogether. So if you've got multiple in the level and you still want them in the level, uh, but you just want to be able to run around free camera to try stuff out, things like that, you can just disable this on the character. Uh, and it does just use a normal character within the uh, third person character. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly set up a camera track with a bit of length, a bit of distance. So I'm just going to drag the path down and move that over and do the same for the Which one's which? That's that one, yeah. Add a bit of a curve in this one. It curves up a little bit at the end. Okay, so now if we test it, uh, I'm sure that's use camera true. Why is that not working now? Uh, yeah, that'd be why. I need to make sure I've got the is main track ticked. So now if we test it, you'll notice that in essence it's working. For a lot of people, this might be literally all you want, um, which is great. Uh, you will possibly notice, however, that the there isn't currently any lag on the... Um, camera itself as of yet. So if I was to set these so they are the same length, roughly. That's so. And then the camera's sort of moving along. It's always going to be sort of on top of them. Which, as I mentioned, is not really that desirable. Um, so that's where the so the lag offset comes in. So at the moment we we haven't whilst we've sort of got that in, it, it's not doing anything as of yet. So that's what we need to set up next. So what I am going to do next is set up the function that's going to start to handle that sort of information. So going back to the camera track, I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to call this one update. Uh, movement of like offset. That's so. Uh, I'm going to get the movement lag offset. I'm going to drop that in and we want to set it. Now, similar to the location, the rotation stuff, we actually want to interpolate this particular offset. So I'm going to do the F interp. And the current is just going to be the movement leg offset so that's what it currently is 
before we set it to anything. And then I'm just going to set up the delta time. And then I'm going to promote the intake speed to a variable as well. That's going to be the movement lag offset speed. So I'm just going to set this to two again. Uh, again, with the uh, sort of speeds, you can play around with these and, and find what values you're sort of happy with. Okay. Now, in terms of the the target, we what we want to do. Well, that's what I'm, do. I'm just going to do just drag from the target. I'm just going to print that to a variable. I'm going to call this one max movement lag offset. So this is the maximum distance that it will lag behind. I'm going to go uh, compile and save, and I'm just going to set the default value of that to 400. And I'm going to go ahead and set that to instance editable as well. So that way, when you've got the camera track selected, you can uh, set that variable uh, if you wanted to. And that just reminds me for the movement, for the lag offset, you can set that to instance editable as well. Now, at the moment, that offset's just, just going to be there. Um, so if you notice, it's not lagging. Okay, one second. Oh, yeah, because I'm, we're not actually calling the update lag offset. So if we go to the event graph, I want to drop that function in at the end, so the update movement lag offset. So in terms of the offset itself, you'll notice it's starting to lag behind now. So whenever we're moving, So as an example, you can see there. Now, one thing you may notice as we're moving towards the camera, sometimes it can get quite close. And depending on the distance, you might get instances where um, the character is actually sort of passing the, the camera, uh, which isn't always what we want. So if we go back to the update lag movement offset, what we actually do want to do is, is actually adjust this value depending on certain criteria. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull from the target and add a select node. It should look a little bit something like this. Now for the wild card, we actually want, well for the index, we actually want that to be an integer. So we just select integer. And you should then get option zero and option one. Now both of those options, we do want to be whatever this max movement lag offset is. So at the moment it's going to work exactly the same way that it it currently is. Um, I'm going to go down to a third option, so this is going to be option two. And for this, what we actually want to do is increase the lag offset. Now, if you wanted to, you can have a specific value for this. Um, for myself, I found it's just setting it to uh, 1.5 times um, is perfectly sufficient. And then what I'm going to do from the index, I'm going to put that to a variable, and I'm going to call this one lag direction. Okay, so what I mean by a lag direction is whether or not the character is moving along the spline or like towards the end, so from the start to the end, or whether or not they're moving from the end to the start. So at the moment, that's just zero. We need to set something up to detect that and update that index accordingly. So that way we know whether the character's moving as I said, from the start to the end, which is normal, or from the end to the start. So if it's from the, the end to the start, we want to increase that uh, offset slightly. So for this, what we can do is if we go to the get time along spline at nearby location, so that's all this funky stuff, uh, we can actually insert something into here. So if we drag a set lag direction node in and we'll just connect it along this pin with this being a pure node whenever this function is called it's also going to update that lag direction now that might not always be what you want it to do if not you may need to pull this logic out from here personally i've not found any issues with it but i'm only using this particular function in in one place okay so what we want to do is we want to get the rotation of the spline based on the input key. 
So if we grab a reference to the path and we want to get rotation at spline, uh, at spline on input, and again, we want to make sure that's set to world location. And we need to connect to this input key here. Uh, what we can then do is we get the x vector. So this is going to convert that rotator into an x, y, z direction. So from minus one to, to one. And then we want to check, essentially do a comparison to see if that's equal to the cam owner's velocity, essentially. Because if they're, if they're the same, then it's moving in the same direction. So what we can do is drag the cam owner in, and we want to go ahead and get the velocity. If I can spell. There we go, get. Oh, and I still picked the wrong one. We don't get velocity. So the reason we're using the velocity and not the rotation is because we, we kind of want to know if the character is actually moving as well. Because if the character is not moving, then we're not actually going to be that interested in the offset. We'll just leave it to what it would be normally. Uh, so with the velocity, I was going to go ahead and, and normalize that. Just because it can be greater than, than 1. So if we normalize it, that will put it to the minus 1 to 1 range that the x vector will be in. We can just connect that straight up to the equals. Now, we don't need it to be exactly right so because it's going to be from minus one to one if we set the tolerance to one as long as it's within one so say if it's moving perfectly you know forward in the x direction and that happens to be matching this then it's fine but if they're only moving slightly so like slightly towards that so they're actually moving like the x and the y but it's like a 0.5 it would still be valid as moving along sort of spline as it were with that done, as I mentioned earlier, we also need to check to make sure they're actually moving. So this itself is not going to be enough. Um, all that's going to do is get the direction that the character is moving in. So from the get velocity, if we actually break the velocity, and then we want to get the vector length. So vector length, which is this one here. And on the inputs, so if we just split the pin, we get the x, y, and z. Now. When it comes to the velocity, for myself personally, I've found that I don't want it to account for any movement when they're jumping. So for me, I've just put it to the X and Y plane. If you're not bothered about the Z and you want that to be included, you can get that up as well. Uh, but as I mentioned for myself, I've just kept that at zero. Now for the length, we want to check to make sure that that's greater than a, a specific number. Uh, so essentially this is how quickly the character is moving now for me personally I found that 300 is about right but depending on the movement speed that you've set up in your characters you will most likely need to adjust this um, to what feels right for yourselves so for me if the character is moving more than 300 then for me that's sufficient enough um, to, to handle with the uh, lerping of the movement like offset Okay, so we've nearly done uh, with this particular section. So now we need to actually determine the lag direction. Now this is going to be dependent. So essentially we've got three states, but with these balls, we've got four states. Which, so we kind of need to collapse that down into the three. So what I'm going to do is do a select int. Uh, and we'll start with the first one. So is the character moving? So if the character is not moving, then it's just going to be index zero. If the character is moving, then I'm going to go ahead and check what direction they're moving in. So here we've got two select nodes. So the second one that's connected to the, the A there. And then we can connect the check for the direction. We connect that to this particular one. And for the values, A is going to be 1 and then B is going to be 2. So one is moving from the start to the end, and then two is going to be moving from the end to the start. Right, so 
Now, in terms of this particular function, that should be it. So, let's put the lag there, and then as we're moving backwards, uh, well, at least I think that's working. Um, double check. So that to something like three. It's quite a short path, so it's again to the end. Okay, so what I'll do, uh, just for testing, I'm just going to set the max lag offset to 200, so we should be able to see that a bit clearer. So it's quite close. And we're moving backwards. Um, this, this doesn't look too bad. So that looks like that's working to me. So Again, with these particular values, you can uh, adjust those. So again, if I set that back to one, you can see the characters catching up to the camera, which isn't really what we want. So again, we can set that up to, again, you can play around with this. For me, I found that 1.5 seems to be okay based on the lag offset. But again, you might want to uh, have a play around with these particular values. Like so. Okay, so the last thing that we do want to do, and that's just on the set camera location. So once we, when we initially update the camera, we may run into an issue where, uh, particularly when we get to the point where we're switching the cameras, is if the camera is over here, and then we switch to the camera and we're over here we have this issue where the camera is going to rush all the way over to where it should be which isn't really well which is probably not what we want uh, it's certainly not something i wanted anyway so the way that i went about fixing this is when we initially set the uh, camera owner we set the location and rotation directly to the desired uh, locations set so yeah so if we get a reference to the camera draw that into the world uh, into the uh, graph and you want to use the set world location and rotation like so and then you just want to connect the desired location and the des desired rotation to those uh, and I just set teleport in uh, as well it's just so it doesn't do it with physics so that'll handle those switches now, in terms of this particular blueprint, that's pretty much it, I believe. So I'm just going to quickly drop these in some categories. So, now desired location, that's a movement, movement like offset, like speed. Um, yeah, just helps keep things organized. And then that can be rotation. Uh, and the lag direction that's movement as well. Okay. There we go. So when you put them in categories, it does up, it does put them in categories when you select it as well. So that can just make it a bit easier to find what you're looking for. Okay. Right then. So with that, it looks like the next thing to work on is actually the uh, system for handling switching to and from multiple camera tracks. Okay.